visits to the scale to make the weight. He is a tough cookie. He was the regular sparring partner. For Danny Jacobs, pre the fights with Gennady Golovkin. And he's got the same man in his corner, Andre Ruzia. He is a tough guy. He will keep coming. And he's a real pit bull of a fighter. And as you'll see when they're face to face, Tommy Langford is by a huge distance. The taller man stands six foot. He's kind of a Britchie proportions almost. Reach of 72. Big reach advantage. But Kurt Sidis is squat. He's powerful. He's strong. And he's got that sort of bull like persona. And he will keep on coming, trust me. and gentlemen we are live on BT Sport and Box Nation for Fight Night Live time now ladies and gentlemen to bring you the main event of the evening courtesy of Frank Warren in association with 32 Red Footy Asylum and Raynham Steel we bring you 12 rounds for the interim WBO middleweight championship of the world this is the fight for the right to meet Billy Joe Saunders. This bout is sanctioned by the WBO, whose stewardess Marion Palatin, with the British Boxing Board of Control, represented by Martin Filoni. Our timekeeper is Tony Dunkley from Shrewsbury. Our judges will be Steve Gray of Fleetwood, Rose the Send of Philadelphia, and Ingo Barabas of Stuttgart. And when the action unfolds at the bell, our referee is Phil Edwards of Preston. Ladies and gentlemen, time to meet the challengers for this title. First of all, in the red corner, he's wearing the black. He is the number one WBO contender. He comes to the ring with a record of 32 wins, 21 of those coming by way of knockout with two defeats and two draws. Ladies and gentlemen, he comes to us from Georgia by way of Brooklyn, New York City. He is the mini Tyson. Please welcome Avtandil Kurtsitsi. And his opponent and fellow challenger across the ring fighting out of the blue corner in the blue and white of West Brom. He comes to the ring having weighed 59.9 on the scales and comes to the ring with a record of 18 wins unblemished six of those coming by way of knockout he is the number three ranked contender in the WBO rankings he is the baggies bomber please welcome Sammy Langford for the interim WBO middleweight championship of the world. Your referee, Phil Edwards, with his final instructions. G gentlemen, you've had your instructions in the dressing room. You know what they expect of you. Follow my instructions. Remember, defend yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Well, apologies for... The chant which greeted Tommy Langford when he made his way into the ring. Obviously totally beyond our control. Let's see what the fight now can deliver. Is Langford going to have the power, the strength to keep this guy at bay? Cursides can punch. Just showing it, John, didn't he? In the very first punch of the contest, left up, but just skinned the target of Langford. So important that he keeps that jab going. Long straight right hand and moves around his opponent rather than moving back. Doesn't want Kurt Sadis pushing him back to the ropes. Well, he certainly loads up this Kurt Sadis. There's no tip tapping around with him. Langford, Langford is the crowd, is the champ now. Billy Joe Saunders, you see, watching on on the far side of the ring.
Bamford will have the problem of having to punch down at this guy. He started nicely though here, Langford. Heads going in close. What's important here, John, is Langford uses his jab and his right uppercut. And as soon as Kurt Sadiz comes in at close quarters, then whip that right uppercut up. There you go, and then finish on the left up and then move round again. Try and control the distance with a strong jab again. But the jab's got to be accurate. It's got to hit the target because this fellow will look to slip and whip shots over the top. Chakucha sledgehammer, they call him. Apparently, so strong, he wants help to make to move house and carried a, a fridge up a, a flight of stairs on the on his back. <laughs> yeah, I, I read about that, that's incredible, isn't it? But what's important here also, John, is that Langford doesn't panic at any stage, has confidence in his own boxing, got to toughen up in this one, and certainly doesn't want to be taking shots in at close quarters like that. Well, that is where he does not want to be. Kertzidis was beaten last time, seven years ago, by Hassan Andam and Jikam, who is a, a real slippery customer. And that kind of gives a blueprint as to how he can be beaten. Only the, only the two defeats in his record. And got this chance for this interim title fight after an upset win against Antoine Douglas. Took the fight at two weeks' notice, did Kersides, and promptly stopped him. So, an interesting opening round, and precisely what we expected. Friday the 19th of May, live from the SSE Arena Wembley. London, get ready. Bellator's British superstars are coming home. This is epic. When England's most notorious striker, Paul Semtex Daly, Man. battles Canadian phenom and top-ranked welterweight Rory McDonald. Rory McDonald gets in his cage with me, he's getting knocked out. Plus, Michael Venom Page steps into the cage against Derek the Barbaric Anderson. London! Bellator MMA, presented by Miller Lite, live from the SSE Arena Wembley. Friday the 19th of May. Get your tickets now from access.com and Ticketmaster. Here's Kurt Sidis with his right. trainer, Andre Rosier. And it was telling, I thought, in the closing stages, there's that left hand from Kurt Sidis. it was telling in the closing stages that the Georgian decided to drop his gloves, invite Langford to hit him, as much as to say, come on then, you can't hurt me. Indeed, Johnny did. He showed you in the replay there how dangerous this fellow is that with that left hook, but that's better boxing sharp. See, and then move around, like I said before. Twos and threes, hit and move, then move around him rather than moving back. Don't move back to the ropes, try and stay in the, the spaces of the ring, and keep him off balance with those shots. It's a better start to the round, this from Langford. There you go. Well, he's not going to be hard to find, Kurt Sidis. What Langford has to do at the same time is make himself slippery and elusive. There you go, in and out. He's beaten him to the punch there, isn't he, uh, Langford? It's a better start. He knows he, he, um, he was under a little bit of too much pressure in that opening round. He got caught with a couple of shots that he shouldn't have, but it's, it's woken him up now. He's woke up a little bit as Langford. That's that left hand again of Kurt Sidis. Can't get lazy, Langford. He has a warrior heart, though. Turned his man well there and clipped him with the right hand. You'll hear as this fight unfolds that the Kurtzidis corner can be very, very vocal. You can see why so many boxers have avoided this, this guy, John. He's as strong as a bull, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's 37 now, imagine what he was like at about 25. He's caught Langford with that left hand, and again. He's a strong, strong man, I think. A lot of people were surprised at just how short he is. That's a nice right hand from Langford.
very difficult to keep this man at bay. So your movement patterns are absolutely crucial. You cannot afford to keep going back in a straight line. Here to move, come around him. That's better from Langford. That's made Kurt Sadiz just think a little bit. Put the good shots there from Langford. But on the ropes and in the corners, they are totally out of bounds, John, against this type of opponent. Been clipped once or twice with that left hook. Swings it from a long way back, does Kurt Sadiz, but a little bit worrying at this stage of the fight that he's been able to find the head of Tommy Langford. Again, he's inviting Langford to come forward. Kurt Sadiz in the closing stages of the round. That's good, doubling up on the jab. Good fight. The beautiful game. You can watch it or you can get involved in it with the latest Coral Action. So, are you a spectator or are you a player? You decide. Coral, get in on the action. When the fun stops, stop. That was a much better round for Tommy Langford, that second. A bit worrying the opening three minutes, but did he give that a Langford round? I, th I did, John. I thought he started the round much better, and then Kurt Sadiz came back Tommy into it, but then seconds. Tommy just finished the round, catching the judge's eye, so he probably Second nicked that. Three. Getting advice from the far side of the ring, Langford to use his jab. There you go, that's better from Langford with the movement. You see, now he's holding the centre of the ring a lot better. That's good boxing, you see, clever boxing. Move around him, Kurt to these, strong as an ox. What he's got to do is obviously sustain the pressure and push Langford, try and get him back onto the ropes and into the corners to restrict the movement from Langford. That's what it, the shorter man's got to do. And when he gets the opportunities, John, on the inside, he's got to work a little bit more, Kurt Sadiz here. But that's why the movement is so important from Langford. Ranked number eight by Ring Magazine is Kurt Sadiz. That's a nice right hand from Langford. Who's ready and willing to take on this man who's been avoided by so many others. And the prize, should he get there, is a big one. Gets him right into the league of Billy Joe Saunders, who's watching on, the current WBO champion. And talking to him, he said there are other fights he'd like out there. He'd like to fight Golovkin somewhere down the line. Well, if he's going to, he's got to come through somebody like this first. There was an example there, John, of how you've got to concentrate in this contest, Tommy Langford. He's doing well up to this stage, then gets caught with a left hook, and that really spurs his opponent on there, look, you see. He knows he's landed a good shot. You've got to concentrate for every second of every round when you're boxing a man of this strength. That's good again from Langford. See, there's and good that footwork, making Kutsidis leap in behind that left exactly hook. yeah and so a gamble shot didn't it gamble shot and and uh, langford could see it coming so that was better boxing but you've got to be switched on he got caught with one earlier on now he's beating him to the punch keeping him off balance and he's boxing better again langford now heads clashed langford looking a little bit uncomfortable look towards the referee and wanting a to be protected in there, he thinks that that's illegal from Kirksides with a little bit of justification. Oh, is there a cut, John? There's a cut above the left eye. Was it a clash of heads? Well, that's something he certainly didn't need. Got cut against Sam Sheedy, did Tommy Langford, and he's looking a bit disorganised in that corner. He's getting himself into a toe-to-toe -to -toe slugging, slugging contest at the moment, and Kurt Sadiz is just trying to walk straight through it. Tom, keep your hands up when you're coming out. You're making him, his hands are down here. Yeah, three, yeah. Tom. Come on. 
Well, we think that this is where the cut came. Was it here? Bang. Oh, yeah. I would say that's where the cut has come from, John. Doing great up to them, wasn't it? It's a bad cut as well. They're going to have problems with that. And Tommy Langford has more problems now. Cut in that third round. A third round which you scored for Tommy? Oh, I, I did, yes. I mean, he had a bad last 25, 30 seconds. But up until then, I thought he was boxing very well. Kurt Sadiz actually um, came on strong towards the end of the round and looked to end the round very strongly indeed. But he didn't win the round. For me, Langford won the round. And he's ahead now on my scorecard. But he's got a problem now, a big problem with that eye. He's got to protect it and watch out for them right hand over the top now. Here comes the head again. Yeah. The referee's going to have to keep a close watch on that. That's better from Langford. Good hand speed. Says he models himself as a fighter a little bit on Joe Calzaghi, and that was sort of a Calzaghi-esque, that hand speed there in that flurry of punches. Well, he needs Joe Calzaghi's work right here, John. He's going to throw lots and lots of shots. That's what Calzaghi used to do, didn't he? His work rate was phenomenal for a super middleweight, and that's what I think Tommy Langford needs here. He needs to keep this man off balance, throw threes and fours. That's better work from Langford. And all the sense of the ring job. Yep, much more assured. Kersides has been really struggling to make the weight. So there could be questions about his stamina the further this goes. Kurtzidis hasn't done a lot in this round. His feet have slowed down, John, that's why he's having problems now, Kurtzidis. He's coming forward and Langford's been able to, to, to read the attacks. The feet are far too slow. He's just got a whole centre ring as Langford, but Kurtzidis is still dangerous. Don't get me wrong, but his feet have slowed down, John. And I just wonder whether that's a legacy of the fact that he has struggled clearly to make the weight. He has been stopped before, as Kurt said he's TKO way back in 2005. Yeah, if you read the report on that fight, John, there's lots of low blows and rabbit shots and all sorts, and the, the corner for Kurt <laughs> were complaining that it was really a, some illegal blows went in there. I didn't see the contest, but I read the report. Good round this for Langford so far. Very good round. Another good round then for Tommy Langford as the bell goes to end the fourth. Be ready. Don't leave getting the best value to chance. Betfair have the best odds on all English football. So no matter what league you're betting on, you'll get the best odds on English football at Betfair. Betfair, win bigger. Carrie Kay's working away on the cuts in that corner. A lot of experience as a dietitian nowadays, as a, a cuts man. Once upon a time, he was a, a champion bodybuilder, as Kerry. Long associated with Ricky Hatton as well. Into the fifth round, another round for Langford, that last one. I've got him a couple of points up now, John. But some judges may prefer this, this come forward style of Kurt Sadiz, but I think Langford is starting to box very well um, now. Like I said before, Kurt Sadiz is... Oh! oh my word. Well, up. just when we were praising him, he gets caught and he's badly hurt, he's badly hurt. I don't think he's going to get up. Has he? He's been given. Well, look, look oh, he's been stopped him. He stopped him. He has stopped him. Phil Edwards.
Edwards looked into his eyes and decided that there was no way. And Avtandil Kertzides produces the upset. We said he was dangerous. He believed he was prepared and ready to go on, but he was badly hurt. And this tough, tough Georgian has provided the upset and now could be heading for a fight against Billy Joe Saunders. Well, Langford was doing so well, wasn't he, those previous rounds up until then. We always knew that this fellow was extremely dangerous. You've got to keep the concentration level very, very high indeed. And he just gets caught with a left hook. He's been caught, he was caught with the very first punch of the contest from Kurtzides with the left hook. And he got caught there with a peach of a punch. It looked quite high on the, on the temple. He'll say that he could have gone on, but the referee's asked him to walk forward, John, hasn't he? He's asked him to walk forward, and Tommy just looked at him and hasn't really responded to that request, and he's called it off. Well, what a performance, you could say. He's uh, been the avoided man, and now he's on the cusp of a, a big, big fight. Interim world title fight. And this is how it happened. Let's have a look at this overhead camera here. Oh, there it was there, that left hook. Maybe a lapse in concentration, who knows, but it's a very quick... He doesn't get that right hand back quick enough, does he? He sort of throws a one-two. There's the one-two, doesn't bring the right hand back to the on-guard position and gets caught with the left hook. It's a quite a lazy, slow one-two. There you go, look, doesn't bring it back. And there, you, there your man there, he just gets him with that left hook, just jumps in and scores a terrific left hook. Yeah, fair play to him, it was a cracking punch. He is a powerful, powerful man who many good fighters have not wanted to know. The Georgian flag is being held up there. Andre Rosier as well will be, I'm sure, not short of a few words after that performance. Meanwhile, anxious wait for Tommy Langford, who's seated on his stool on the far side. The doctors taking a, a close look at him. His plan, he said, was to get off first and get out of the way. And the plan for the first four rounds looked as though it was working. But then he didn't get out of the way and we all saw what happened. I mean, in every round, Kurt Sadiz is very, very dangerous, but Tommy Langford was just getting to grips with it, wasn't he? And I said to him in the week when I visited the gym, I said, this is a type of contest, Tommy, where you've got to stay 100% concentration for the whole 12 rounds, every second of every round. He says, I know, Richie, I know. But he just laps there. Maybe, I don't know, it was a one-two punch combination. He doesn't bring the right hand back quick enough. He just gets caught. But it was a hard fight, John. This is a hard fight to take on. You've got to give... Great credit for Langford for actually taking this contest because this fella has been an avoided fighter indeed, Kurt Sadiz. And we now see very clearly exactly why that was. Good uh, round of applause from the crowd as Langford got back to his feet. But a night of huge disappointment for him. Kurt Sadiz is the man. He now moves on and Billy Joe Saunders will be waiting, maybe, and I think we can go into the ring now and hear from our MC tonight, Alex Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'd like to show your appreciation for the brave effort put forward tonight by Tommy Langford. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 27 seconds of round number five. The referee decides that Tommy Langford in no position to continue, which means that the new interim WBO middleweight champion of the world, Avtandil Kurtzitsi! Tommy Langford will be bitterly, bitterly disappointed. He thought he'd got the blueprint for success, but he couldn't keep him off. He found the big punch, and now he gets that belt and moves on potentially to a big showdown against Billy Joe Saunders. Thank you, John. We cannot say we were not warned. Ring Magazine, the ratings, they did not lie. All the power in the world, and even at this apparent veteran stage, he was dangerous, lively, powerful, experienced, and it's a cruel, painful lesson for Langford. Let's hope he can come again. But what next for the man who is claiming that as though it were the real world title? As we understand it, this is the real world champion.
Billy Joe Saunders. You are still the reigning world champion, to clarify that first. I am indeed, yep, I am. Uh, just watched it there. I think Tommy Lankford could have made, well, could have had a bit of a field day, to be honest. I mean, he could have used his feet a bit more to let him tire himself out, little angles, play with the jab for three or four rounds, and you can see he was blowing out too. But um, Danny DeVito, I like to call him and nickname him, that um, he caught him a good shot, fair play to him. never got... short of a quick, good line. It's uh, about, you've got to learn your way in. You, you know, this is all new for Tommy Langford, so he's going to have to take the bones out of this, surely, Billy Joe. Yeah, listen, it was a, not a big ask because I reckon the opponent was suited for him. But it's just a few mistakes he made tonight. He got a cut, maybe that worried him a little bit. And uh, he just looked like a, a rabbit in the end lights at, at times there where he should have got on his feet and made him miss and made him pay a bit. Promoter Frank Warren. Sum, sum up what we saw first, Frank, before we talk about what's see, next. Uh, you know, the guy was just too rugged for him, too strong for him. And he got caught with a shot. You know, there were moments in the fight where he was doing the right thing, Tommy, where he's using his jab and keep him basically get on his bike. And it would have been interesting to see what would happen if it had gone on longer. But the fact of the matter is he got caught, and that's it. You know, he's a tough guy, this guy's a tough guy. And, you know, he's Bill's mandatory. We're doing that fight on July the 8th. Are you? July, July the 8th. So that is a confirmed plan now. That's the confirmed arising plan, from tonight. July the 8th. So it's a tough fight for Bill, but Bill's a very skillful boxer. He's a world-class boxer. So, um, you know... It's going to be an interesting Where, fight. Frank? Where? Probably in London. You ready to do that job? Well, listen, no disrespect, no disrespect to him, but I'll show you what he is when I fight him. That's all he is to me, is a pumped-up Danny DeVito come forward for him punches. If I can't beat him, you might as well forget about the big fights because I'll show you how to make him miss and how to make him pay on uh, July the 8th. Are you using Steve Bunce's